Oh my goodness me, please say Marty joins us now. So this is really difficult to sort of yeah. talk about anything because so because on the iPlayer you've got all of the series and everybody seems to be watching different series. On, on the telly-wise, where we're up to, can you tell us, I want you to get into trouble, not me. Can you tell I us where we sort of pick up? It would be a great up? twist if the Balaclava men was actually the village people. We're changing tack this year, which is uh, really good because I think normally they kind of set up the show and, the, and AC12's job description is to go after bent coppers. Yes. But this year we're actually going after the criminal gang, the Balaclava men, uh, Balaclava men themselves. And oh, see, now you just said Balaclava men. Yeah, yeah, so look, they're, we've so kind of established is, that there's a, a sort of gang, yeah, there's yeah. a gang of them. We established that at the end of four. Um, but in terms of just, uh, and Stephen Graham is sort of the, the leader of this gang, and so just in terms of he's by far our most dangerous adversary because this time we're not just chasing, usually it's coppers who have maybe put themselves in a bad position. And it's good to see you sitting here because actually at the end of the last series there was a bit of a... Stushy, <laughs> as we say in Scotland. It, but there was there was a situation, and yeah. there was there was even a petition in real life of people panicking yeah. that maybe you possibly might not be. It was a funny one that because um, it's I was really worried just because I love playing on it, but he's very very arrogant and he can rub people up the wrong way, and I wasn't really sure about the, his relationship with the audience, and so I was kind of thinking if if he goes over the stairs, will anybody care or will feel? And then. But the reaction, the sort of outpouring of love the character got from yeah. that, and that's yeah. completely changed uh, his relationship with the audience from then on. So it's it's been good, and um, is, is, is everything with Jed's writing? I'm back on my feet on this one, but well, everything's not as it seems. Even your mum okay. asked you. Yeah, yeah, she was um, she was panicking a bit. I think she's just seen her boy going over those stairs, but yeah, and she well, thought she's probably worried about mortgage and all that stuff. Well, all that kind of thing, you know what? It's just I think because we've got so good at keeping secrets from everybody for the yeah. twists, you know, um, because it was a lovely moment last night. We watched it at the BFI, and it was great to see it with an audience. And um, there was one moment where the whole place there was this collective gasp of like 300 people, and those they're really, really rewarding those moments, you know. So that was a joy. Well, you say you came in and sat down and said, actually, I think this is the best one yet. I, the, the, it's, it's really satisfying and kind of terrifying with pressure, knowing your job as an actor is just not mess up these scripts because they're so good. And Jed Mercurio just pulls it. I don't know why, because my biggest fear sometimes is when you go, like, can he do it again? Because it's series after series that they're just mm -hmm. immense. And uh, I genuinely do think these are the strongest ones. I don't want to be like one of those band guys who goes, oh, my next album is better and better. But this one really is phenomenal. That. Well, he might be close to home. You never know. Um, oh. It's uh, one of the great things about um, having the returning series is usually we, with the new league guest stars, which has been such a huge uh, part of the success of the show, we. We get to delve into their backstories quite a lot, quite quickly, because you need to learn their motivations. But because we've had a lot more time, you're getting to see into AC12's backstories and mm -hmm. every one of their personal lives is a bit of a mess as well. So, and right. that's a lot of fun to play as an actor. But yeah, that's the kind of thing, uh, especially with, with Arnett, from my point of view as a character, you'll go after anybody. And is um, learning that sort of sort of the police jargon, the dialogue, is that quite difficult at There is, and I... I <sighs> I think sometimes Jed just does it to torture you. <laughs> there was one uh, line I have in this, and I, I had five acronyms in the space of one sentence. Do you still remember that I line? do, and I, I would tell you, because just the thing about it, it maybe give away a wee oh, okay, bit of a spoiler. Fine. But yeah, there's, there's a lot. And it, but it kind of comes a wee badge of honour, you know, kind of yeah. trying to learn them and stuff. And and some of them, are, it's just impossible to say exsanguination in a cool way. You know, like, <laughs> you've, just got to, you've just got to get it out, you know? It, um, it must have been nice to have done Mary Queen of Scots um, and been able to keep your accent. It was, I, I mean, because even now, I mean, my own accent, this is probably what my, my pals would call my your, your phone voice, you know what I mean? We're from Greenock, it's probably a bit harder, but... I mean, with that, you were just charging about the Highlands on horseback with a big sword and a beard and armour. You know, it was great fun with that kind of stuff. Sasha and Margot leading oh, the charge are phenomenal. Yeah. And it looks, it looks amazing. It does look amazing. And we know that there's going to be another series of Line of Duty. Yeah. I don't know whether I'll be in it, though. Oh! Well, you, don't know. Well, who, you don't know who's going to make it to six, do you? Well, you, you filmed know. it. You must know. No, we filmed five. We've got six commissioned already. So, so the show... No, no, no. Back. You've shot five. Yeah, um, well, I, I know, you know. But I know, but the audience don't know. <laughs> Anybody can be up. I mean, literally, that's the thing with the show we've had. It's not. It's been a job of a lifetime uh, in terms of the scripts and quality, but I've, I've never laughed so much on any other set in my life. We do love it, and it's it's been 
it's been a great, I mean, nearly seven or eight years now. Yeah. So if Jed decided it was your time to go, you know, you just need to say thanks for the memories and, yeah. and accept it. Um, and no, go don't, back don't to... say that. That's yeah, no, but it's just, I think that's one of the great things about the show, that people, anyone can go, you know, so it's on a knife edge the whole time. Um, and, yeah, there's some, there's some big shocks coming this year. <gasps> and um, and so, wait. regardless of what happens, then you, you know, jet back home to Nevada. Yes, I do. I'm Nevada? A, Nevada, I think it is now. I'm a Las Vegan, I think. Um, yeah, I arrived, so sorry for my wee bit jet-lagged. I arrived yesterday, yeah, but my... Uh, believe it or not, I moved to Vegas to calm down. Um, because <laughs> you're, um, well, my wife's originally from there, and if you're living in London and LA and you're there, it's because you're an unemployed actor and it's full of unemployed actors. So there's, right. there's a lot of mischief to be had there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we just thought it was kind of time for me and the wife to settle down. So, yeah, we Have moved. you installed your, uh, your, 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 your I'm building my yet? bar. Uh, the lovely people at Tenants are building me a, a tap, so I'll have my own, <laughs> my own tap for my bar. And, oh, that's uh, brilliant. Yeah, you've got to have those wee home comforts, you know. Well, it's lovely to see you. It Thank is. You. And uh, it's Line of Duty. It's Sunday, the 31st of March at 9 on BBC One, so and we good. can't wait. And it's re really, really lovely to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.